pancreatic cancer is one of the most frightening diagnoses that patients can receive. It happens to around 43,000 people uh, annually in the U.S. Most of these people are over 45 years old, but the scary t statistics are that there is a 25% one-year survival rate and a 6% five-year survival rate. So that makes this diagnosis um, for a lot of people feel like a, a death sentence. Uh, the reason uh, that these are so dangerous is because most of the time they are asymptomatic until they've gotten to a point that they are uh, metastatic or they have grown too much to be contained. So the major risk factors include uh, family history, hereditary pancreatitis, um, pancreatitis or inflammation of the pancreas. Chronic inflammation can lead to dysplasia, which can lead to uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, BR BRCA2, which is most commonly uh, associated with breast cancer, is also a risk factor. Poitiers disease, which uh, is most commonly associated with uh, polyps in the colon, uh, also has a, a risk of pancreatic cancer. Ataxia and the ABO blood group is is uh, the, there are various blood types that can that are more likely to get pancreatic cancer than others. So, um, as we mentioned, chronic pancreatitis or inflammation of the pancreas can lead to cancer. Diabetes is a risk factor. Smoking, obesity, diet. Uh, diets high in fat, um, aspirin and NSAID use, and uh, H. pylori, sorry I left off the I there, H. pylori and hepatitis B all are associated with pancreatic cancer. So uh, normally when uh, when these patients present uh, with pain or weight loss or jaundice um, then uh, it's the cancer's already progressed to a, a stage that uh, is problematic uh, is serious the uh, there are some people that will present present with a painless jaundice and uh, those who do present with painless jaundice are often associated with a little bit better of a prognosis just because the, the painless jaundice would most likely correlate with a cancer of the pancreatic head which um, is uh, constricting um, the bile ducts and uh, that can lead to an earlier diagnosis than than a presentation involving pain uh, or including new onset of diabetes. So um, ultrasound is usually one of the first things that that you get on these people. Um, a fine needle aspiration guided by ultrasound is is uh, probably the gold standard of of imaging or of uh, diagnostic tests. Uh, CT is is also done for um, staging of the cancer um, with pancreatic tumors that are too large um, then often it is too late for surgery so a CT is, is a good test to determine that um, as well as CA199 is also used to determine the uh, resectability of cancer 
There's also something called a multi-detector CT, which is uh, preferred for diagnosis and staging. Um, ERCP, MRCP, and MRI are all uh, useful labs. So resectability is really the big question. It has a, a lot of implications for prognosis. If you have a tumor that can be resected, then you have a lot uh, better chance of uh, having a good prognosis. So the major factors in resectability are whether or not the cancer has spread, um, whether or not it's vascularized, and then a, a good indicator that is used is the CA19-9 levels. So um, the the vascular involvement of of the cancer um, could mean the superior mesenteric artery, inferior vena cava, a celiac artery, and the hepatic artery. So if any of these are involved uh, or are um, infiltrated by the tumor, then that would indicate uh, a non-resectable tumor, as well as CA199 levels above 1,000. And that is the end of the slideshow, but not the end of the topic.